I remember we were talking about this one question before, but I want to ask you again. Uh, what is something that you believe, but you think most of the people around you do not believe in? Oh shit! What did I say? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you go to school? Uh, NCTU, National Jiao Tong University in Taiwan, and then Harvard for grad school. What did you study in both schools? I did semiconductors in undergrad, and I did data science in grad. And now you're a machine learning engineer. Pivoting into the software part. Exactly. Wonderful. What, is, what do you guys do at Bitler, and why do you think it's a, it's a great company to work at, lead a team? ML monitoring is what we do. Basically, people want to figure out whether their machine learning model is performing well. If not, why? And what should they do about it? What's a good place to work at is it's still relatively early stage. Well, we raised our Series B, um, and the team is around 60 people right now. I joined when we were 30, so it, things change really fucking fast. Like every adrenaline rush, where like, if you know the company will die soon, you're like, fuck it. Okay, now we really need to make it work, and it's actually quite exciting. Like, whereas, you know, previously I was like a gigantic company, nobody gave a shit about how the company performed. Because, like, it was really not in their business. Whereas at Fiddler, I feel like, you know, something I do can actually save the company, which gives me more motivation to actually do the shit. Interesting. So, tech lead Morris. Okay. I have a very <laughs> serious question for you. Uh huh. How do you feel about your Harvard degree? Do you feel like, how helpful do you think that was? Very helpful. Okay, in what sense? Well, in my network sense, I get to meet a lot of folks just because I have Harvard on my resume. Actually, first of all, I'll say I'm very lucky and privileged to get into Harvard because I had a terrible GPA. And I don't think what I was, do you mean by terrible? I like three point ish GPA, like 3.2, 3.3. Well, I was aiming for a specific program and I wrote my SLP very specifically for it. I guess that's probably why I got it. Anyways, what was I saying? Yeah, the network. Like, you get to meet a lot of Harvard folks, smart folks, MIT guys, you know, have some interesting conversations. And then, well, I'm a, I'm a program, I'm a tech league now. And, but I actually studied semiconductors. Which Interesting. Means I don't have at Harvard. I did semiconductors in undergrad. I did data science at Harvard. Interesting. But now I'm a software engineer, so it's both not directly correlated to what I do. But I think because I'm from Harvard, people are willing to give me the chance. Like usually, I think what's good with Harvard is people assume you're smart. Then, you know, then you have to just you, know, you could just do it and then prove it to them. Whereas in other cases, people won't assume you're smart and then you have to demonstrate a lot more work for them to believe that you're smart. So that's a good privilege that we have, you know, at Harvard and MIT guys. You mentioned a lot about privilege. Do you think that's... Oh, it's my, to my advantage, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any advice for that you would give to people who don't have a Harvard degree? Uh, let's see. Well, I... Build, build something. Get into Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> get into Harvard is one thing. You can get into MIT or Stanford. And if you don't, then you find something you're interested in and then build something and then show people what you built. And then, you know, you don't need the Harvard resume because you just built something. Right. Last question about uh, school. How do you feel about pivoting to something that you did not study in university for your degree? Oh. Because you were, you said you were studying semiconductors and data science and how you are a software engineer. Yeah. So I always wanted to be an engineer. A software engineer, sorry. Um, actually, not always. At, so during my, I think my junior year, I was an exchange student at UIUC. I was there at the career fair and it's a semiconductor. So I was looking for semiconductor jobs. And the 90% of the jobs were like software engineering jobs. I'm like, what the fuck? How can I get a job in the US? If I'm studying semiconductor, I just started writing code. And I was like, shit, writing code is actually pretty fun. So then I tried to apply for a CS for grad school, but I couldn't. Uh, so so competitive. That's why I went for DS instead. 
Um, what was the question again? <laughs> How do you feel about pivoting to something? Pivoting is, not, yeah, you know, well, it's tough, as in, you know, you're starting from scratch, and you know, there's probably a little bit of imposter syndrome, where you know, like I'm starting coding at the age of 23. These kids start coding at 15. How the fuck can I compete? Um, but you know, as long as you work hard enough, figure out your edge, then you know, you'll be able to contribute. Very interesting. Uh, some philosophical questions for you. Uh, how do you how do you how do you think about failure? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think, think too much about failure. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, fail cheaply, fail fast. Nice. So right now is actually the best time to fail, because we have no responsibility. Even if we fucked up, nobody fucking cares. <laughs> right now, as in when? Like, I'm, I'm what, 27? <laughs> but say I'm 33, and then I fail, and if I have a kid, that's so many people who depend on me. Like, I just can't, you know. So it's a lot more risky. Whereas now, I could literally do whatever I want. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. I remember we were talking about this one question before, but I want to ask you again. Uh, what is something that you believe, but you think most of the people around you do not believe it. Oh shit. What did I say? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I think every once in a while I say something like this. Oh, right now? I don't know. My private belief is like uh, the software industry is getting so competitive. And there's like this new term about the modern data stack. Probably everyone is building a new data tool. Like, I don't know if it's the right place to get in. It's so competitive, and I don't know where the market is big enough. And everyone's trying to get into data science. That's true. I mean, I did. <laughs> That's about it. Cool. Tell us, tell us about Fiddler. Oh, Fiddler. What is? What do you guys do at Fiddler? And why do you think it's a, it's a great company to work at, to lead a team? ML monitoring is what we do. Basically, people want to figure out whether their machine learning model is performing well. If not, why? And what should they do about it? So it's basically a, a SaaS platform that you, know, you send your models data to it and it provides like, tools for you to see the drift of your model, dive deep in a root cause analysis, your model's performance. What's a good place to work at is it's still relatively early stage. Well, we raised our Series B, um, and the team is around 60 people right now. I joined when we were 30, so it, things change really fucking fast. Like every two, three weeks, I'm working on something different, which is nice. And we have a lot of smart folks at Hitler. Yeah. So hit me up if you want to join. <laughs> uh, how do you think about? leading a team in a startup that is growing super fast compared to working as a, at a senior role in a large company like Google or Facebook? So I've never worked uh, in a senior role at a large company. So I'll only speak to the pros of working at a fast moving company at Berlin. Um, so basically, there's always more problems than we can solve. and. So you really need to figure out how to prioritize yourself. And there's a lot of constraints. I mean, real life constraints as in, we only have so much money and we need to deliver something within a certain timeline. So it really forces your mind to, you know, figure out creative solutions. And there's like no people who is like overlooking you saying, we can do this, we can't do that. Like the mindset is just to get shit done as fast as possible. So. I guess that's one of the pros working at a startup. Interesting. Interesting. I was thinking about, let's see what I was thinking about. Oh, I was thinking about, there's this whole PLG notion with like this whole PLG notion about selling software, like product led growth. As in, you know, your product, product should be good. And then, you know, people then buy the best product. I was thinking about it, I was like, damn, isn't that a very dumb statement? You know, shouldn't people always buy the best product out there? 
why is this a new trend? People are not always rational, I guess, from an economics perspective. Yeah. Well, but what, what drives this behavior is like my main question. What are, what are your hypotheses? Well, my hypothesis is the distribution of software has really changed. Now, this is just a hypothesis. I haven't proven it yet. But let's say in the early 2000s, if you wanted to buy a software, you'd go to whatever shop you had, then you Best Buy, and then you buy a disc. And then, you know, you put it into your, your computer, blah, 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 blah. And then you finally get to try it out. That's at least like three, four middlemen in between. So there's a lot of decision makers there. But right now, literally, because of the whole cloud thing, you just go online, log in, and then you get to use a certain software. So which means, with all the middlemen out, now which you're really comparing on is the product. There's no such thing about distribution problem anymore. So I, my guess, that is the reason for all this PL, PLG growth um, trend. But I don't know, it's not proven. That's a really good news, actually. Very yeah. reassuring. Yeah. It's it, just like back then when people just were starting e-commerce platforms. Like, people were, people were selling based on the information gap they had, right? And now like they know like they can just, if their product is really good and they do good social media campaign, uh, their product is gonna get, gonna get sold very well. Uh, yeah. so as you say, the distribution problem has been addressed by those big tech companies. Overall, it's good news for consumers. That's I true. agree. But if I'm just thinking about knowing this, how do I make money? <laughs> and knowing this trend, like if this trend continues to go on, where does new opportunity come up? Um, so I've just been thinking about that. Interesting. Is that something that uh, you and your colleagues at Fiddler.ai are discussing as well? Or is this your own personal thinking? Personal thinking. It's personal thinking. Yeah. Maybe. Fiddler, we're mostly talking about machine learning stuff. How do we build a stable product? Right now, I think we have... There's definitely something we're touching on, as in... There is a problem that exists. Now, there are two things we need to do. Figure out the right way to solve the problem and then build a stable product around it. Um, so we're making progress on both fronts. Hopefully, you know, we get to do it fast enough and beat the crap out of other folks. Nice. Do you think you are good at competitions? Competitions? Sometimes it's fun. I actually quite like it. Like, there's a certain adrenaline rush where, like, if you know the company will die soon, you're like, fuck it. Okay, now we really need to make it work. And it's actually quite exciting. Like, whereas, you know, previously I was like a gigantic company, nobody gave a shit about how the company performed. Because, like, it was really not in their business. Whereas at Fiddler, I feel like, you know, Something I do can actually save the company, which gives me more motivation to actually do the shit. Interesting. It's fun. It's fun. I mean, hopefully it works out. Learned a lot of filler. <laughs> How about you, Sean? How do you feel about uh, Google? I'm afraid I can't comment too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I the we share the milk tea. For each is actually. Oh, 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 oh,